Darlene, thank you for agreeing to share with us in this video interview series here at the Toronto Conference 2012, our 50th anniversary. And as a past president, I really appreciate you sharing with the rest of the society, those who are part of the society and those who are yet to come. For our audience, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Sure. I'm Darlene Van Team. I started out in Detroit, Michigan with the Michigan chapter. It's a, been a very illustrious chapter through the years, but now that I teach virtually, I don't teach at University of Michigan anymore, I retired from there. I live in Port Huron, Michigan, which is semi-rural, and St. Augustine, with Florida, which is, a, both are small cities, and we don't have a local chapter. So I get more involved with uh, virtual things, in, including the Capella Virtual Chapter. So uh, chapters are wonderful and it's important for all of us to be involved in, in this society. Yes, you and I share that uh, home chapter. That was my first chapter of the Michigan, yeah. what's now the Michigan chapter. Can you tell us a little bit about your first exposure to HPT? How did it happen? When did it happen? Yes, it happened in the 70s. And it was, I was active both in ASTD, that would be the Greater Detroit Chapter of ASTD, and the Michigan Chapter of ISPI. And what would happen is one year someone would speak at ISPI and the next year it would speak at ASTD or the other way around. So there were so many speakers and they all, the, the ones that had that message about performance improvement, I was just so interested in what they had to say. But actually, when I think back, performance improvement is to some extent problem solving. My father was a, in a design engineer with Chrysler Corporation, so even as little children we were taught systematic problem solving and systemic looking for the, with a real problem. So I guess I come to it with that in terms of managing projects to make improvements. Uh, I was real active in Girl Scouts, especially at the the metropolitan level, which would be the uh, uh, the very large level uh, of the of it was called the Metro De Detroit chapter. So, I mean council. So um, I guess it comes very easily and naturally, and I think it's a, a a real wonderful profession for all of us. So who besides your father's influence as a design engineer? Uh, who were the other big influences that you've had? People or books or articles, etc., that uh, uh, helped you um, in your initial entree into the field? Ah, well, uh, the first person I really admired in the performance improvement field it was Judy Hale. When I first met her, she was with Ipstippy, just. She's so passionate and so committed and so knowledgeable. I was just impressed with her energy. I was also impressed with her. I've always been impressed with the fact that she has accomplished so much. She can do more in a year than most people do in a lifetime. She's just a wonderful leader and a down-to-earth person. The next person that's had a lot of influence on me is Roger Kaufman. And the reason that I really admire Roger is because he thought about mega, he thought about society, and he never gave up. When many of us couldn't see beyond the people, process, and organization, he called us to think about the role of what we do and how we impact society. And he also said, uh, talked about the fact that if we weren't doing good, then we weren't accomplishing anything. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the exact words he uses. The next two people that have a lot to do with, with um, my career have been William Detterline and Mark Rosenberg. And that's because they developed the first model of HPT. In a sense, they took the ADDI model analysis, design, develop, implement, and evaluate, and then they added cause. But that's a very simplistic way of looking at it. They also created it as a feedback loop, that it was more than just one, one kind of shot through. And then our job was to enhance it later into to our books. 
um, I know I have a long list here, but I, I really want to mention um, Roger Addison. He started in our field in high school, as he mentioned today. He would come, at, we were programmed instruction, and Roger Addison, after school, would go and debug and, and work through a lot of the program and instruction that our early people in our field um, that were developing. I think not everyone realizes our, that our society started as programmed instruction. And he can tell wonderful stories. They're funny stories. He's got a great sense of humor. And that helps us really understand. I admire David Cooper Ryder, though I have never personally met him. I've met his collaborator, Diana Whitney, uh, if, with appreciative inquiry. And we're just beginning to appreciate and understand the, the role of positive aspects um, in, in, in many areas of performance, in, in, of improvement. Another one, of course, is Joan Dessinger and Jim Mosley, my co-authors. Uh, you probably know I've written three editions of Fundamentals, Fundamentals of Performance Technology, then Performance Improvement Interventions, and now we've just combined those two books into Fundamentals of Performance Improvement. Joan, Jim, and I were actually all former reading teachers, and so as we wrote the book, we wanted it to be easy reading, and um, Jim has such a wonderful knowledge. Joan just passed away about a week and a half ago. What a loss to all of us. Um, not only was she knowledgeable, but she also edited our things. And finally, um, an another person that means so much to me and to the field is Guy Wallace. Guy um, stands for what's right, and he has the energy, and he follows his vision, and he follows what he believes in when other people are almost exhausted thinking of how to make that happen. Guy has the vision and Guy makes it happen. And, um, well, let me cut you off there then because that's more than a nice uh, of you. Um, for, for our <laughs> audience here, as a, um, do you have any kind of a 30 second uh, elevator speech on human performance technology or how you approach performance improvement? Yeah, um, I, again, some of that influence of Mark Rosenberg. In PI Journal, quite a few years ago, write a, wrote a, an article that fascinated me. It was called Tangled Up in Terms. And he basically defined performance improvement as the results. The techniques, the processes that we use are called performance technology. And the people who do it are consult, called performance consultants. And I, I I think that's a very simple way to understand it. We, we all nowadays uh, believe in lifelong learning, so do you have a current focus or a future focus for your own learning in various aspects of human performance technology? I'm particularly interested in the positive. I've worked with Jennifer Rosenzweig and we have adapted the HPT model and it's called the HPT model, the appreciative approach. We're beginning to learn more about positive psychology. Um, Dutton, Cameron, and Quinn from University of Michigan wrote Positive Organizational Scholarship. And Martin Seligman at Penn, I think it's University of Pennsylvania has done a lot. Harvard's beginning to look at it. Many people are beginning to notice that a positive approach makes a difference, but we really don't know why. And so, like there was just a recent article about, from Harvard in, um, I, I can't remember, a recent publication, and it talked about the fact that they know that people who are positive will have uh, lower blood pressure as a large population, a big study. Lower cholesterol, lower blood pressure, but of course they don't know why. So um, we're just beginning to really be able to define what is positive in terms of people um, and, and match the research. And I'm very interested in learning more because I think there's a lot we can learn for our field from mm -hmm. that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, part of our series here explores various HPT terminology. And is there a term, an HPT term that that you can define for us something that you feel is 
ill-defined or misdefined by, by others, um, something you can help add to the clarification of HPT terms? Sure. I guess the one I'm most interested in, I, I have a background in business as well, is writing business cases. I think in our field we are very vague and we don't go to senior management and we don't get a solid background in a business case. Now it could be that all they want is a, a short PowerPoint presentation, maybe a, just a brief an, a summary of what you want to do, it, but it, using business terms. Or we can do a full-blown business case. I know when I was with Ameritech, which is now part of AT&T, Ameritech was the Midwest. We wrote a business case as a group of us for um, bringing in new software had to do with the ads because I was with the yellow pages and in terms of training I had to add to that business case and that's the first time I really thought about the fact that we really should be talking in business terms and we should be able to communicate well with our financial people our senior level management it's just um, part of what we should do and I think we'll have greater credibility the more we can do that yes I agree that's excellent thank you Another aspect of the series here that uh, we're trying to accomplish here is capture stories of, of people from the past, either going back into NSPI or the earlier days of ISPI, but do you have some stories of others um, that are professional related or just personal stories of, of people from our field that you can share with us? Uh, yes. I guess the first one is how do we get into ISPI and how do we get active, especially at the international level? A lot of people, I think, think um, what would be the value at the international level? And they don't realize. Um, for me, I was, as many of you may know, I was active in ASTD. And I had a lot of awards and I was active at the international level. I had just gone out of business and industry. I had been seven years working with General Motors on, with, through General Physics uh, where I was the curriculum manager of all the technical training for General Motors North America. And then I had worked at Ameritech, which is AT&T, in the Human Resources as Director of Training in Human Resources. And now I was back at university. I was with University of Michigan at the Dearborn campus and the program that I was working on as a ten, uh, on a tenure track was called um, Performance Improvement and Instructional Design. And I was trying to teach that course and many of the students were like engineers, accountants, they could be former teachers, they could be people that are working as performance consultants, they could be nurses, um, dental hygienists, everything. Well, if you were in the field, you were okay. But if you weren't, it was very hard to, to take a book like the handbook. It's a very good book. But it was a hard place to start on the first day. It was pretty daunting to be a huge book of 900 pages for your first book in your first class. So there was a, a booth at ASTD that was from ISPI. And Matt Davis was there. That's the husband of April Davis, the executive director. He was the director of publications for ISPI at the time. He's now with um, Pfeiffer, that's Wiley, and he I arranges to publish a lot of our books. But I said to him, oh, would you please find someone to write a book that tells sort of step by step so that the people transitioning into our field can understand it. And you know, he said, write an email when you get back, and so I did, and I said, oh, that was so passionate. I probably shouldn't have said it that way. And you know the response. Will you write it? Yes, of course, do it. We need it. Will you write it? I had written, published some articles for IS, for PIJ at the time. So And, and so I said, oh, that's way too much, because no one had done anything like that. So I said, I need a couple co-authors. So I went to my colleagues and friends, Joan Dessinger and Jim Mosley, and I thought that would add a lot of new thinking, fresh thinking. And we put together the fundamentals of performance 
technology, and I know many people had it in class for a textbook, but it's also been used as a trade book. I know a lot of people tell me they use it with their management or someone to explain it. So everyone has an interesting route for getting into ISPI, and that, that, that's my story about Matt Davis. Um, the other thing that how, that's been very important to me, and it could be a cliche kind of thing, but chapters can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And um, I was fortunate to come into the Michigan chapter, guys chapter, but it was we had Frank Wydra and Marcy U, Marcy Uday. We had, of course, Guy. We had Rita Ritchie, who was the head of the program at Wayne State. Um, Judy Hale would drive from Chicago, just like when Guy moved to Chicago, Chicago, he'd drive. We had wonderful people, like the people that just um, got a award today, like Eileen Banchoff, Lisa Tonegas, who is the um, incoming president-elect, Irita Ekstrom, who has been a conference um, chair for, I think, Jeannie Farrington's conference. Uh, I think what do you do when you're in a chapter? You not only get exposed to leaders, but you get to network with, with each other. I always suggest to people that, and one of the important things about networking is that if you work on a committee, people are likely to recommend you. If you don't work on a committee, someone's going to say, well, they seem like a good person, but there's that hesitancy. I really don't know if I should be recommending that person because I've never seen them work. So I think that's a, a huge ass, asset. Now we're getting virtual chapters and there's still lots to do and lots of offer, opportunity to grow with a virtual chapter. I guess that's my two main stories. Oh, well thank you. Thank you so much for sharing with us and uh, uh, congratulations on uh, your new book. I just received a copy of it last week here, and it is a big one, so it's going to take me a while to get through it, but I <laughs> really appreciate your contributions to the field. Thank you very much. Thank you.